According to the type of heat transfer is important and demonstrating gas differences in dryer design, operation and energy requirements. Uh, that is the discussion of, uh, on the classification based on the type of the heat transfer. While in the uh, second classification that the royal classifier according to the methods of solid material handling, the major criterion is the presence or absence of vegetation of the material to be dried. We are going to dry a material on the, the basis of this classification of solid material handling. Uh, the major criteria we will uh, select uh, while classifying uh, the prior on the basis of solid material handling that uh, we will consider the criteria of the solid material handling if either we have to show that it is uh, the presence of vegetation will be there the vegetation of the material which is to be dried and that particular dry and dryer and the second one is either uh, the criteria is based on the vegetation or solid material handling that is the absence of vegetation there are two cases, either the vegetation will be present in the material to be dried or 
the absence of presence either in either case is uh, that is on the basis of solid material and like that we are going to dry the material and either the material will be agitated or the material will be not agitated so on this basic criteria agitated material or not agitated material is a main classification uh, based on the solid material handling there is a material we have to select for the drying purpose and the dryer may be that one in which the solid material to be dried is uh, agitated or that will lack the agitation of the material that is to be dried a dryer that produces excess agitation that contraindicated when drying uh, material that is to be dried as fiber and subject to attrition. In this case, if we have a material that is fiber in nature and that is subjected to attrition and after that uh, fiber nature of that material to be dried, it is uh, contraindicated that we have selected a dryer that is uh, excess vegetation as they are happening and uh, this will be complete toward the viability of this particular material because of the nature of material that is viable in nature and in this case uh, a dryer should be selected uh, that uh, lack of the excess vegetation rather than uh, producing excess vegetation because uh, the material will be uh, subjected to attrition uh, in case of the excess of vegetation uh, produced by the dryer. On the other hand, have the dried product intended to be pulverized, then the drying time can be reduced and the process made more efficient. If you pulverize the product, uh, the dried product, in this case the drying time will be uh, minimized and the process made more efficient, so the efficiency will be more by the use of dryer that produces intense agitation during the dry cycle. So a dryer can be divided into four main classes on the basis of solid material handling. If we classify the dryer on the basis of solid material handling, then there are four main classes of the dryer. You can see uh, at this table on the left side you can see there's a type of dryer in the middle you can see the mechanism of that particular class of dryer uh, and uh, the last one that is the example remember that uh, this is the classification of dryer on the basis of solid material handling The four classes include the static bed dryer, this is the first class of the dryer on the basis of solid material handling. The second class is uh, aimed at moving bed dryer. And the third one is the fluidized bed dryer. And the last one you can see that is the uh, pneumatic dryer. These are the four main classes on the basis of solid material handling. If you are asked to explain the classification of dryer on the basis of solid material handling, uh, then you have to write uh, these four main classes. If you are asked to enlist, then you should mention only the name. If you are asked to explain the mechanism with example, uh, then you should also elaborate your answer when including the mechanism that is what is meant by the static boot dryer the mechanism of the static boot dryer is a system and which there is no relative movement among the solid particles being dried we have the solid particles uh, which is to be dried solid material which have uh, some content that is the moisture content that is to be removed and uh, there, is, uh, there is no relative movement of the solid particles that is uh, to be dried and uh, this system will be formed as a static bed dryer this type of the class of the dryer will be formed as static bed dryer because there is no relative movement among the solid particle that is to be dried although there may be bulk motion of the entire 
or drying mass. The example include tray dryer, freeze dryer, and a commonly routine example that uh, we put uh, some material in the oven and we keep it for drying purposes uh, for the heating purposes as well as let me compare the similarly a tray dryer and the freeze dryer there is no relative movement of the particles that is to be dried uh, among the solid particles are not moved uh, relatively with one another but there is a bulk movement of the entire mass for the process of drying well the second uh, class of the dryer that is strong as moving with dryer as the name indicates uh, this system uh, the drying particles are partially separated so that they flow over each other an example of that is the drum dryer is one of the example of the uh, moving the dryer class of the dryer and the third one that is called drive dryer system that makes the solid particles are partially suspended uh, in the partially suspended state that is termed as the fluidized state and it is suspended in an upward moving heated gas system uh, the hot air uh, using the hot air is a high velocity hot air uh, heating gas system uh, that is uh, partially suspend the solid particles and the example of the fluidized bed system or dry system is uh, also fluidized bed dryer. Pneumatic dryer uh, system in which drying uh, particles are entrained and converted to high velocity gas stream. For example, spray dryer, and it is one of the uh, example of the pneumatic system of dryer. These are the four main classes of dryer on the basis of solid material handling. And some uh, that is a static bed dryer, the materials of solid particles will be in the static condition. There is no movement while the moving one that is uh, partially separated and they will flow with each other. They will flow each other and uh, the fluidized bed dryer, the suspension, uh, suspending form by uh, using the, an upper movement of the uh, heated gas system partially suspended particles are there and a pneumatic system uh, the bright particles are entrained and converted to high elastic gestures. And you can see on the right side there is an example of each uh, class of the dryer. Now in this part of the lecture we will discuss the spray dryer that is uh, what is meant by the spray dryer and which class spray dryer that is the last one that is the pneumatic dryer and the classification you can see by complete discussion over this spray dryer you will uh, understand that what is meant by the uh, spray dryer and uh, the pneumatic class of the dryer principal The principle of this uh, type of dryer, it is a pneumatic type of dryer, is one of the example of the pneumatic type of dryer that is a uh, spray dryer. The fluid to be dried is atomized into fine droplets which are thrown radially into a moving stream of hard gas and the temperature of the droplets. Uh, the fluid that is uh, one of the feed. Uh, we are going to process for the processing of the drying and you want to dry the fluid that is either suspension or any other liquid that is to be dried uh, first of all it is atomized and you find droplets which are thrown radially uh, that is the shape of a radial shape and a moving uh, stream of hard gas by the application of hard gas that is uh, thrown radially in the uh, pathway is radial pathway and uh, temperature of the droplets is immediately increased and fine droplets get dried in the form of spherical particles after exposing to the hard gas as I have told you in the first line a second line you can see that is uh, we are going to 
dry the fluid. In the pressure of droplet is immediately equaled and fine droplet will dry in the form of spherical particles. This process of the drying completes in a few seconds before the droplets uh, reach the wall of the dryer. Now, this is one of the drag web. That is a hot air inlet, a uh, tangential air inlet, and the liquid we want to dry. That is uh, one of the return process, uh, unprocessed material, or liquid feed, or fluid. And it is atomized uh, using uh, that particular atomizer. And that is uh, one of the shape, that is a radial shape, that is a cone. And before reaching this wall of the, uh, uh, of the assembly, uh, the drying chamber, after exposing to the hot air, that particular in the atomized form, the fine droplet form, they are exposed to this hot air, and these uh, droplets become dry before reaching to the wall of the drying chamber. And after that, uh, the vapor is exhausted and the circular through this using the circular separator to dry product is collected. Now we will consider after the diagram that I've told you briefly regarding the principle uh, that how it works and how the fluid is dried. Uh, construction of this particular drying chamber that is uh, spread wire. It consists of a large cylindrical drying chamber. There is a cylindrical shaped chamber, that is drying chamber with a short conical bottom. You can see it is a drying chamber, that is a conical shape at the bottom. You can see a large cylindrical chamber and uh, at the bottom is the cone shape. As a short conical bottom made up of the stainless steel. The construction material that is stainless steel and uh, what is the diameter and what is the height of that particular uh, drying chamber. Uh, we are calling it a spread wire. Coming in spread wire diameter of 2.5 to 6 meter and the height of 15 meters uh, may be uh, more than uh, these uh, mentioned figures. An inlet uh, for hot air is placed in the roof, you can see, that is uh, an inlet for the hot air, which is also termed as hot air inlet, you can see that is uh, in the roof of the assembly, and another inlet carrying spread is atomizer is set in the roof, you can see, it is atomizer, also set at the roof for uh, atomizing the liquid and uh, the form of small droplets. Spread is atomizer is about uh, 300 millimeter diameter. If you are going to select uh, the spread is atomizer here, then uh, its diameter is 300 millimeter. And the speed of rotation that is 3000 to 50,000 RPM, that is rotation per minute. That is the speed of the spray disc atomizer that is responsible for sprinkling or for the optimization of the liquid or feed that is to be dried. Bottom of the dryer is connected to a cyclone separated. You can see that uh, that is the bottom and that is uh, further connected with that particular area that is termed as cyclone separator which is uh, responsible for removing the vapors or moisture content and uh, separating uh, the dry product from one another. Now how this assembly or this equipment works? The drying process is the primary work of that particular spread wire and how it works uh, for the processing of drying of material what happened uh, with that particular material it is to be dried and spread wire that is involving the three stages. The first stage that is uh, atomization of liquid that is to be dried. 
the second one is uh, drawing up liquid droplets and the third one is recovery of the dry product now we will discuss one by one the first one is atomization of liquid the feed is introduced to the atomizer that we have feed that will be introduced uh, into that particular area by a liquid feed and further it is subjected to the atomizer by gravity or uh, by using a suitable pressure pump to form fine droplets you can see the fine droplets uh, in the form of that particular you can see area uh, that is the formation of droplets either we will use uh, pressure pump or it may be formed by using the gravity under the influence of gravity they will fall or they will uh, form and to uh, the fine droplets the property of the final product that is uh, required depends upon the droplet form the liquid feed is delivered by pressure nozzle under high pressure if we are selecting a pressure nozzle then what is the pressure of the nozzle that is high and the high pressure is up to 7000 pounds per square inch and uh, is woken up and coming into contact with air and the pressure of nozzle atomizer that we are going to use uh, for the droplet formation by using a suitable pump or by using a uh, influence of gravity there are three uh, any type of the atomizer which is using uh, either the pneumatic atomizer or pressure nozzle atomizer type or the pen, pen and disc atomizer either of uh, these three types of atomizer any type of the atomizer may be used for the conversion of feed uh, that is the liquid feed into the uh, fine droplets rate of the feed that is unprocessed uh, liquid or fluid adjusted in such a way that droplets should be completely dried before reaching wall of the drying chamber after exposing it to the hot air the second phase or stage of the processing is the drying of liquid droplets the first phase uh, that we, are, we have discussed that is the atomization of the liquid once the uh, liquid is atomized and uh, it will be, become dry how it will dry to, uh, the second phase we will discuss it in the second stage of drying of liquid droplets surface of a liquid drop is dried immediately to form a tough shell liquid inside must escape by diffusing to the shell at a particular rate and when the liquid inside rush out from the uh, shell a particular thread uh, by the process of diffusion it means that uh, the liquid, liquid will left the droplets and it become dry heat transfer from the outside to inside take place at a weight greater than the diffusion weight compared to the liquid diffusing rate the heat transfer rate which uh, comes from outside to the inside at a greater uh, rate will occur uh, as the wizard heat inside amounts up the heat will become uh, the heat inside will become more and it will mount up which allow the liquid to evaporate yes. this leads to increase in internal pressure of that particular droplets which causes the droplet to swell the shell thickness decreases whereas permeability for vapor increases if the shell is neither elastic nor permeable it ruptures and internal pressure escapes while in the third step 
Uh, this is uh, one of the stages that is uh, for the drive process and that particular uh, wire that is recovery of the drive product. Centrifugal force optimizer drives the uh, drop rate to follow helical path. You can see that is one of the helical paths that is followed by the spanning of the atomizer. Particles are dried during uh, the journey and finally fall at the conical bottom. All these processes are completed in a few seconds. What are the processes? The first process is the optimization of the liquid and the second process is that is uh, drying of liquid droplets and the third one that is recovery of the dry products. Particle size of the final product ranges from 2 to 500 millimeter. Particle size depend upon the solid content of the feed, liquid viscosity, feed rate, and uh, the speed. These are the several factors, on the basis of which we can say that uh, these are the different factors uh, which lead to our the particle size. Uh, the solid content of the feed, the liquid viscosity, and the feed rate, uh, the more or less, and the speed of the dust, the capacity of the uh, spray dryer that is uh, 2000 kg per hour. And in our, we can dry the up to 2000 kg material. In this part of the lecture, we will discuss the advantages, disadvantages, and uses. of the spray dryer. First of all we will discuss the advantages. It is a continuous process and the feed will be incorporated and uh, after passing to the three stages it will come dry. Complete within the three to three hundred seconds. Uh, so much less time to take in for the processing of the drying by using this piece of equipment that is uh, spray dryer. The level cost is low and the product of uniform and comfortable size can be obtained by using this piece of equipment. And fine droplets form provide large surface area for heat and mass transfer. Uh, as we have discussed that uh, drying, uh, the creativity of drying, that drying involves both the heat transfer and uh, mass transfer. And the fine droplet providing the larger surface area and uh, that is exposed to heat and mass transfer and that's why the product shows excellent solubility because of the fine droplets nature provide uh, a good way for the drying process either solution or suspension or template can be dried and one step to get final product ready for package or ready for use or reconstitution uh, which may be the solution form or suspension or in the test phase, ten phase form either of these products uh, they can be uh, easily dried uh, the final products condition uh, ready for the packaging and drawing of the UL product and reconstituted product can be obtained by using the specific equipment. Globules of an emulsion can be dried whether it is post phase inside and layer of the continuous phase outside uh, there are several disadvantages. Uh, several disadvantages include that it is very bulky and expensive. That we have mentioned in the construction, that uh, dry meter and the height of the equipment as will uh, accommodate in a larger area. And due to the very bulky and expensive nature, that is one of the disadvantages of the spread wire. And uh, such huge equipment is not always easy to operate because it is very bulky and it is uh, not easy to operate. Uh, because of the uh, huge and uh, bulky. The thermal efficiency is low as much heat is lost and the discharge gases. Uh, so now we will discuss the uses of the spray dryer. Spray dryers are used compulsorily. 
if we have no choice uh, that is the product will obtain from the better form than the obtained by any other type of broiler and the only way by, by using this piece of equipment uh, in order to get a better form of the product and for this purpose we will use a uh, spray dryer the quantity uh, if we are going to uh, uh, requiring a uh, larger quantity the quantity required is large in this case uh, we will select uh, the spray dryer the product is thermal hygroscopic or undergo chemical decomposition Moreover, the spray dryer's uh, drying is also capable of producing spherical particles and the fireable range of 1 to 7 mm that have been used satisfactorily for the delivery of drug from dry powder inhaler. A few of the products that are dried using spray dryers are citric acid, gelatin, vegan sulfate, Borac, chlorophyll, vitamins, and uh, some of the antibiotics for the reconstitution that may be obtained by using uh, uh, this piece of equipment that is from a spray dryer. At first, uh, you can consult uh, the factors of industrial pharmacy by the Lakeman Leberman. Total uh, edition, uh, we have consulted pages uh, from 55 to 61. A page may be varied in the latest edition and in the older edition as well. And the second uh, book consulted for the preparation of this lecture is Ultra Pharmaceutics, uh, the Science of Dosage from Design, second edition. And the uh, page is consulted uh, from 329 to 390. Let's go either to the topic that uh, what we have discussed in the to the lecture. We will go to the lecture of uh, that is a uh, discussion on the classification of briars and uh, as well as spread wires details. Discussion on that particular spread wire that is one of the pieces of the uh, number of prior pipes. First of all, we have discussed in detail the uh, various classification, uh, very important uh, depending upon the uh, criteria for which we are using the wire and two useful classification that is uh, one of uh, the method of heat transfer on the basis of method of heat transfer we are classifying uh, the method of the solid material handling and then we have discussed uh, the classification on the basis of the solid material handling and on uh, that particular basis of the solid uh, material handling. The major criterion is the presence or absence of vegetation of the material to be dried. If we have selected some of the material and uh, we want to dry it, then either vegetation will be there or a lack of vegetation. Uh, by using uh, this criteria, uh, the basis of methods of solid material handling. On the basis of this uh, solid material handling, there are the four main classes of the dryer, including static bed dryer, uh, remaining going bed dryer, fluidized dryer, limited dryer, and uh, then we have. Uh, thorough discussion. Uh, in this lecture, we have discussed uh, the mechanism of the static uh, moving and fluidized as well as the pneumatic wire, so along with examples. In the second part of the lecture, we have discussed in detail the spread wire according to the principal construction. Uh, 
the block diagram of this pet wire here the work tank the work tank comprises of three stages for drawing a material and the spare wire the first stage is uh, atomization of liquid and as uh, the atomization of liquid different types of atomizer we have discussed it is pneumatic atomizer pressure nozzle atomizer and spinning disc atomizer and the pressure uh, nozzle atomizer a high pressure that is used up to 7000 pounds per square inch We have also discussed the second stage, it is the uh, drawing of liquid droplets. That's how the liquid droplet drives. And the third stage, uh, that is for the processing of drying and recovery of dried products. And the uh, particle size of the final product limit which ranges from 2 to 500 millimeter. And the particle size depends upon the solid content and the different factors, including apart from the solid content of the feed, liquid viscosity, feed weight, and uh, disk speed is also there. So, this is uh, one of the factors. It is the uh, speed of the disk. Uh, capacity of uh, the spare wire is up to 2000 uh, kg per hour. And finally, we have discussed the advantages, disadvantages, uses, and uh, some of the examples of the products. It was dried using uh, square dryer and the references consulted by the definition of uh, this lecture. So thank you all for your attention. box the like man the classification of the wires you can see a classification of the wires on the page number the page number 55 and uh, one of the classification that is on the method of solid handling including a static bed moving bed rollage bed and uh, magnetic wire systems you can see what this diagram uh, that is uh, one of the diagram used for material that is uh, agitated or not agitated. You can see on the top.
to it is a classification of drive as a method of solid handling you can see the drive graphs are uh, block diagram of the classification material not agitated uh, this is example include a static good wire and uh, material agitated uh, that is uh, moving with dryers dye with dryer and uh, pneumatic dryer in the static with dryer there is no movement of the particles while uh, in the other three classes that is the material agitated uh, moving with dryer to dye with dryer and uh, pneumatic dryer these are the three classes of uh, dryer and when the materials are agitated while in the fourth class that is one of the class of the dryer that we have classified on the basis of the solids handling which are not agitated it is static with dryer Uh, static bed wire, there are certain types of, type of example, including over here. You can see it is train part dryer, we do fed dryer, bead dryer, and apart from that, uh, tunnel dryer, bed dryer, and uh, fistule dryer, as well as the drum dryer. Uh, similarly, apart from the example that we have discussed in the lecture, there are certain other example either for the big types so uh, that we prepare in the one cycle and a continuous part because we are going to continuously uh, incorporate the feed and that is continuously process that is one of the continuous types that is a big type of the continuous types so different examples were given for the moving bed dryer, fluidized bed dryer and as well as pneumatic dryer. that we have uh, considered page number 55 to check the diagram a figure that is on 56 page number 56 and the lecturer the theory and practice of Lakeman and Leberman, the theory and practice of industry of pharmacy, second edition. Uh, that is uh, additional information regarding uh, the classification of dryer on the basis of solid material and then we can classify it into the material agitated or material not agitated or on the main classes of there. Uh, four main classes including the static bed dryer, moving bed dryer, ludite bed dryer and as well as the pneumatic bed dryer uh, along with the mechanism and uh, big types and continuous types of the dryer and the relevant class of dryer.